just like to welcome everyone here, so thank you for coming. First off, I'd like to welcome Mr. Kors, and hope it's talking about the blessing and blankets. Thank you. All right, we are going to uh, begin our worship service uh, with a prayer, and then uh, Marley and Bill Buzz are going to sing us a song. And following that, the sixth graders are going to come down and proclaim Luke 2 for us, and then we'll be off and running. But let's begin with a word of prayer. Lord be with you all. Gracious God, we thank you for today. It's a good day. We thank you for the privilege it is to be here. We thank you that we can call you our Lord and Savior. We thank you for the season, the privilege it is to get to worship together. Uh, we ask that you'd make us aware of your presence, Jesus, and your name pray. Everybody said? As you know, our middle schoolers tie blankets, and they tie blankets for the Ronald McDonald House. And it is a wonderful blessing to the Ronald McDonald House. And uh, Ms. Jill Chris Christopher, Christopher is here somewhere. There she is, and she's going to say a word or two. Thank you, Sophie. provides housing for families who have children aged 21 and younger who are receiving medical care in the Fargo Market area. So these are families that are coming in to receive the quality medical care we have here that they might not have in their home community. Uh, so it's everything from newborn babies that were born a little bit too early uh, to kids that are going through cancer treatments. Um, we have older kids that might have been in a car accident. We've had a lot of different reasons they might be here. So if you can imagine that you've had some of a traumatic event like that and then you're away from home. So you might, um, your family might be split. We have that going on right now where we have a family who just had a baby born a little bit too early, born at just about three pounds. Um, so they're still here in the hospital. Mom and baby are here. And the other kids are back home trying to go to school and dad's trying to work and they're traveling back and forth every weekend. So it's really a, a lot of back and forth. And so something like a blanket can really mean a lot. Um, so these might be cuddling a newborn baby. Uh, they might be uh, going to a big brother or big sister who's a little scared at what's going on and, and if their the brother or sister can be okay. And so it brings a lot of comfort, especially when it's cold. Um, so I really appreciate all that you've done for that. You really make a difference for our families. We've had over, over 300 families already this year. Uh, so these will go to good use and they go very quickly. So thank you guys very much. So we're going to pray for these blankets and for the people who uh, they encompass here. So if you want to put a hand out uh, towards the blankets here, let's just uh, pray for these blankets real quickly. Jesus, we thank you for the Ronald McDonald House. We thank you for people like Joe that uh, give up their time and their expertise to help people in need. And we lift up these blankets and we pray that your spirit would be woven within them, that those people, those little ones, those hurt and broken ones that that blanket will comfort and encompass that they'll have a sense of your presence and peace uh, by using that blanket. We just thank you for the privilege it is to be able to serve you and pray a blessing on all of those little buggers that need a healing touch today. In Jesus' name, everybody say, Amen. Amen. Thank you. All right, now, special music.
sixth grader. So I'm going to come down and do a little bit of Let's welcome them all, bro.
Thank you, choir, and people who participated in that. Praise the Lord, the candle didn't fall from the ceiling, we didn't start anything on fire. Woo! It's a good thing. Isaiah 9 2, 9 2 says, The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, light has done. We are truly in the season of light. In, in 1895, someone invented the first electric Christmas tree lights. Ever since, now through December, the evenings will be lit up homes, businesses, city streets. The night will be filled with beautiful colored lights and decorations. In our culture, there's now even competitions for the lights. You can watch them on the YouTube you could drive through Lindenwood and see lights. And all this seems fitting because the birth of Christ is also decorated with lights. There were angels who lit up the night for the shepherds, and of course the star in the east, which led the wise men to find Jesus. Christmas is a time of, a time of lights, and that's only right because Jesus is the light of the world. In John 1 it says, In him was life. And the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. John 8, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. John 12, I have come into the world as a light, so that no one who believes in me should stray in darkness. The prophet Malachi, but unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wind. And as we read earlier, the prophet Isaiah, the people walking in darkness have seen a great light. And those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has shone. It's a repeat thing. Jesus is the light of God, and Jesus fills us with light. In fact, if we turn all the way back to Genesis 1, verse 3, it says this, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. God saw that the light was good, and He separated the light from the darkness. Light. It is a beautiful, wonderful thing. Now a story. So, uh, most of you who know me know that I like to go out and about occasionally, duck hunting, goose hunting, and fishing, and such. And so often I take with me a trusty flashlight, right? And so let me just uh, talk a little bit about my duck, hunt duck hunting extravaganza. Um, and I often hunt with people, but sometimes, uh, being a little bit weird, I hunt by myself, right? And so, uh, let me paint this picture for you. So, I'm driving around the lovely back roads of North Dakota looking for a cornfield that is filled with green-headed mallard ducks and maybe some geese, right? And when I find that field, I get super excited, and I go knock on the farmer's door, and I ask the lovely farmer if I might go shoot at those uh, lovely waterfall. Most of the time, that farmer is pretty excited about my endeavor and says, sure, go ahead, shoot it. So, <clears throat> then I ask the next question, which is where I get the weird glances is, well, do you mind if I just park my truck out there and sleep in the field? And then they look at me like, uh, that's weird, but sure, go ahead. And the reason I do that is because I don't like anybody else to beat me to the field that I want to uh, hunt ducks and geese in. So, uh, typically I spend the evening in my wonderful Ford Explorer, um, waking up time to time, uh, fairly convinced that Sasquatch is now looking at me through the window and uh, wondering just what should I do next. Uh, it's a creepy feeling when you fall asleep in the middle of nowhere in a car and there's all sorts of windows around you. But anyway, nonetheless, uh, I absolutely love it. And so, now it's time to get up and set up the decoys and get ready to hunt. And you can imagine this is anywhere from 2 in the morning till 4 in the morning, but it's, it's dark, right? 
And this is where it gets even a little weirder if you're not a duck hunter is you take your trusty flashlight and you walk around the cornfield at the weird times of night and you look for duck and goose poop. Okay? And I know I probably shouldn't say that word in a Christmas sermon, but nonetheless, it's what you do. Okay? And then when you find it, then you know that's where them rascals have been, and you want to set up there because they are going to come back there. Okay? So I spend my time walking around, I find the stuff, and then I start setting up, and it's great. It works great. Okay? So now I get everything all set up, and typically I bring uh, my backpack with it has some gear in it. And then I set my backpack there, and I take uh, my trusty flashlight, I turn it on, and I set it on my backpack, and then I drive back out of the field, right? I go park it someplace sneaky so the rascals can't see my car, so they don't know I'm there. <clears throat> and then I can walk back out to my spot and find my way back to my little spread of details. Well, <clears throat> this one particular time uh, last year, I was hunting by myself, and it is a thick, foggy, misty day, morning. And so, you know, if you've been up at, at all hours of the night in one of these settings, it is dark. Like, it is creepy dark, can't see ten feet, right? And for whatever reason, I forget to place the trusty old flashlight on the backpack. Uh, as I drive out and I start walking back out into the cornfield, and I'm <clears throat> thinking, I got a pretty good idea where I set up, I'm good. And as I continue to walk, and I realize I have absolutely no idea where I am. And I'm, <laughs> I'm just walking aimlessly in the absolute pitch darkness of a cornfield. I'm uh, fairly confident I'm going to run back into Sasquatch who was watching me through the window over there. And, or fall into a hole, or who knows where I'm going to end up, but I am now lost in the dark. And not just lost, but I am in the dark and I have no idea where I'm going. And then you start to get a little disoriented, and you start to get a little panicky, and it's like, holy moly, I'm going to walk around forever in the dark. And it got scared. Anyway, sort of came to my senses and realized, you know what? I'm just going to sit down. Because the sun is going to rise. And if I just sit long enough, at some point the sun will rise and I will be able to see where I have set up my stuff. So, long story short, I sat there for a while, got a little bit more freaked out because when you just sit there and do nothing, you hear things. And uh, so then I decided it was more fun to walk because I could run faster. Um, <laughs> and uh, actually running into one of my decoys and uh, finding my stuff. And uh, then at least I had my gun with me so that I could shoot what was ever chasing me. Um, but lo and behold, it worked out. I found what I was looking for. I did get mauled by Sasquatch. I ended up shooting some ducks and geese. It was actually a wonderful morning. But I learned a valuable lesson about the value of light and the fear and the lostness of darkness. And I want us to be thinking about two different aspects of light uh, this Christmas season. And I'm going to read to you one more uh, scripture verse taken from Ephesians. It says this, for you were once darkness, but now you are in the light of the Lord. Live as children of light. And I find that to be interesting and uh, a little bit scary because it tells me, for you were once darkness. It doesn't say, for you were once in darkness. It says, for you were once darkness. And that's where I want to start. I want us to think about God, I want us to think about Jesus being the light of men, and I want us to think about the parts of Mr. Corbis and of you that need some light, right? Because part of my problem is, from time to time, I like the darkness, right? 
From time to time, there are dark little corners of my soul that I want to keep dark, <coughs> that I want to keep hidden, that I don't want anybody to know about, that I sort of enjoy even though I'm not supposed to, and I like that. And so that's the hard part, is I, that's where I need to humble myself and acknowledge that I do it. That there's darkness parts of me that I just assume hold on. And that is perhaps where, oh well, not perhaps, where without a doubt I need God's light to shine. Because you know what else is nice about these little lights? Is when you lose something and it's dark, they reveal things, right? Like look at all the stuff that you find under the pages, right? That light shines in dark places and reveals things. And that's what the light of God does for me from time to time. It reveals to me the things that I yet need to work on. That I yet need to rid my soul of. The muck that mucks things up and makes it harder for me to hear the still small voice of God. So that's one. Right? We need to allow the light of God to shine in to those dark little corners of our soul and reveal to us the things that we need to work on. Second, I ask that you pay attention to what kind of light are you. We experience lots of lights in our life, right? There's good lights, there's helpful lights, there's dangerous lights, there's scary lights. All sorts of things that uh, are lights, right? There is the uh, police officer lights that start shining behind you that are like, oh, oh, right? He's driving too fast, right? Or, or there is the person that forgets to turn off their brights as you're driving, and you're like, oh my goodness, you mean person, please turn off your lights, right? Right? There's other lights that are sort of blinding and irritating, right? And there's, there's other lights. There's, there's lights like, like this one. Maybe, maybe I'm not an irritating light all the time, but maybe I'm, I'm one like this that shake it enough, it works. Well, maybe it doesn't. We all know sometimes you have to shake one to get it to work, and sometimes it, maybe that's the Kind of like you are. You maybe it don't work at all. There's glass flying around in there now. It doesn't work at all. But maybe you're one of these lights, right? What kind of light are you? If we then are to be children of the light, if we are to share this light, if we are to live as children of light. What does that mean? What does that mean for us to be children of light? If we don't allow ourselves to be examined, if we allow God's light to shine in and through us and clean up some of the muck, right? We allow God to clean us up, right? What kind of light are we? See, because I think one of the beautiful things Crafty, stay with us. One of the beautiful things of a candle is what? It's light, it's warm, and we're drawn to it. Right? It's light, it's warm, we're drawn to it. Who doesn't like a lit candle? Right? It's just, it's calming. It's, you can stare at it for a while, it soothes your soul. There's something so wonderful about the simplicity of a lit candle. And so as, as we drive around, as we go to Grandma's house, as we sit in the darkness of our home with a lit up Christmas tree, if we see a candle, if we uh, drive through Lindenwood, if you find yourself in places where there are Christmas lights, I want you to be challenged in two ways. To one, be thinking about where does that light need to shine in me? 
right? To help me become more of a child of the light. And secondly, what kind of light am I? Do I, do I show warmth? Are people attracted to this light so that I can share the light and the love of God with them? Let's pray. Jesus, we thank you for light. We thank you for the privilege it is to be called children of the light. Help us to understand what does that mean? How does that work? We do ask that you would uh, keep us humble, keep us on our knees, so that your light would continue to work through us and sift through the muck that sometimes we let seep in. And then yet challenge us to be a warm light, a glowing light, a light that people are attracted to so we can share your love, your word, with those around us. In Jesus' name, everybody say Amen. 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 And I'll ask Madeline to come forth that she uh, is going to share some special news with us.
beautiful Lord God. Amen. 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 Thank you all, Val and Arlene, Buzzer, Mr. Zinter, all these people that have participated today in making it whatever it is. It's just, uh, it's just, it's a good day. And so I uh, bless you. Uh, have a very, very, very Christmas. Enjoy the season. Don't forget, tomorrow after the games, um, to come gather us with us around the Christmas tree. And uh, I'm supposed to stay after. Anyway, go peace serve the Lord.